In 2021 alone, over 20,000 supernovae were detected across the observable universe. While this might seem like a massive number, it's actually not that significant considering the hundreds of billions of galaxies in the cosmos. Supernovae are incredibly rare events, as only certain categories of stars are capable of ending their lives in such spectacular explosions, and they don't represent the entire spectrum of star types. Now you might be wondering whether a supernova could pose a danger to Earth. Rest assured, there are no supergiant stars near our interstellar neighborhood, except for Betelgeuse, which I can make a video about if you're interested. Just let me know in the comments and by the way, feel free to subscribe to the channel, it's free and that's the best way to support my work. Personally, I've never had the chance to observe a supernova in the sky, but I'd love to see one someday, like I loved witnessing solar eclipses. Thankfully, eclipses occur all around the world, and thanks to astrodynamics, we can predict them down to the second and even calculate the width of the path of totality in kilometers. How awesome is that? Predicting a supernova, on the other hand, is nearly impossible. We don't have much time to notice the outer layers of a star being ejected before it happens. We could detect such a warning with our modern optics, but only if the supernova occurs close to us, like within the Milky Way, dwarf galaxies, or even Andromeda. A supergiant star exploding in the far reaches of the cosmos would appear to us as just a tiny point in deep space, visible only through telescopes and not to the naked eye. This proximity to the solar system is crucial because the 10 most powerful supernovae ever recorded in history occurred within the Milky Way. The most powerful of them all dates back to the year 1006 and was observed around the world in Egypt, Europe, Japan, China, and possibly even North America by indigenous people. Its estimated apparent magnitude was minus 7.5, making it 17 times brighter than Venus. The site of this cosmic catastrophe is located 7,200 light years away from Earth, within our galaxy. Witnessing such an event would have been truly extraordinary. It's always a bit frustrating to hear about historically significant events like supernovae without any tangible photographic evidence. Every year, thousands of supernovae occur throughout the universe, so we have to be extremely patient, or perhaps just lucky to witness one close to us. By the end of the 20th century, our optical technology had advanced so much that dying supergiant stars became easily detectable. It was during this period that a supernova occurred close enough to Earth to be visible to the naked eye and photographed by space telescopes and major ground-based observatories. Detected on February 23, 1987, the supernova took place in the Large Magellanic Cloud, which isn't actually a cloud but rather a dwarf galaxy orbiting our Milky Way. Astrophysicists often compare galaxies to cities, with the Milky Way being a megacity and the Large Magellanic Cloud being a small town about 100 kilometers away, or 168,000 light years away on a cosmic scale. The star responsible for the explosion, SK69202, was identified and cataloged in 1970, 17 years before the catastrophic event. After the supernova, the star mysteriously vanished, leaving behind some baffling questions. It was a blue supergiant, and at the time it was believed that only red supergiants could go supernova, so this event expanded our knowledge on the subject. Despite the distance and the fact that it didn't occur within our galaxy, the observing conditions were optimal. Several independent teams were able to detect the sudden change in magnitude, and they were fortunate because the Large Magellanic Cloud is one of the most observed regions of the Southern Celestial Sphere. It's constantly being analyzed, so naturally, when a supernova occurs, it's hard to miss. My favorite version of the story comes from the Scampagnias Observatory, where the team discovered a new star in the Large Magellanic Cloud while taking a long exposure photograph. As it turned out, it wasn't a new star at all, but rather SK69202 about to explode. They didn't know it yet, but they had just witnessed one of the most significant astronomical events of the 20th century. Several of their colleagues would confirm seeing the same event, followed by others in New Zealand. 
Eventually, it was discovered that the supernova had already been observed the day before by an amateur astronomer in Australia who had noticed the star's increasing brightness just before it exploded. Before it exploded, the International Astronomical Union in Korea released a statement announcing the event, now known as SN1987A, which stands for Supernova 1987A, the first of the year. This was the first supernova visible to the naked eye both day and night since the 17th century, and it remained so for two months. Now we have a clear, modern understanding of what a powerful nearby supernova looks like, captured by the world's best optics. The explosion's remnant took the form of a giant ring, which is still visible in images today. But the most curious part of this story isn't the explosion itself, but rather the core of the exploded star. In most cases, the remaining core transforms into an extremely dense soup of elementary particles, one of the densest objects in the universe, just behind the singularity of a black hole. We call these neutron stars, which are incredibly small, just a few kilometers in diameter, yet have the mass of an entire planet or even a star. The problem is that the detection of this stellar ghost has never been successful. The Hubble Space Telescope has regularly photographed this region of the sky since 1990 to find something tangible, but without any real success. If even the world's largest space telescope at the time struggled, it's a challenging task. However, all signs point to the existence of this neutron star. Before the supernova, the star's core becomes so unstable that it collapses in on itself. During the creation of the neutron star, the core releases a massive amount of neutrinos, elementary particles, that travel almost at the speed of light and can pass through matter. They're invisible, but we can detect them. Among all the neutrino detection centers worldwide, only three managed to detect neutrinos from SN1987A, one in Japan and two in the Caucasus. In 1989, two years after the event, a team from the Cerro Talalo Observatory in Chile claimed to have discovered the elusive neutron star. Its magnitude is too faint to be seen with the naked eye, unlike the supernova, but the number of pulsations is phenomenal. This giant star's residue spins at a frequency of 1968.629 Hz, with a rotation period of 0.5 milliseconds, meaning it rotates 2,000 times per second. The fastest neutron star ever detected spins on itself 716 times per second. It is believed that beyond a certain frequency, the soup of particles would be vaporized into space, but spinning 2,000 times per second is too much. If it were true, the neutron star's rotation speed at the equator would be 40% the speed of light. However, this groundbreaking news has never been confirmed as it was only observed once by a single team and has never been replicated. Researchers have tried in vain to achieve the same results. Supernovas are the result of rare, giant stars at the end of their life. We're already fortunate to have cataloged so many in the universe, even if they come from the far reaches of the cosmos, billions of light years away from Earth. As for when the next one will be close enough to be visible to the naked eye, we don't know and sadly, we can't know for sure. In the meantime, you can always subscribe to the channel, share the work, give the thumbs up, leave a comment and activate the notification bell. Don't forget to watch the other videos on the channel and I'll see you in the next one.